can be turning to Romans chapter 4. Just thanks to Jody for filling for the last week. If you recall from our previous lessons, we've seen how that Abraham was justified by faith without works. Amen. How that his faith was counted for righteousness. And really goes the same for us. And in this sense, Paul calls him the father of all those who believe. That in the same way that Abraham was saved by faith, we are saved. That it wasn't by works, it wasn't by keeping the law, it wasn't by circumcision, neither is it by any external work for us. We pick up here in verse number 13 of Romans 4. We'll read through verse 15. It says, For the promise that he, speaking of Abraham, should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Amen. For if we, or excuse me, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of faith, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Mm -hmm. We begin here by, after he showed us that Abraham was our our example of faith, our example of having our faith kind of for righteousness, that is that because we have faith in Christ, the righteousness of Christ is applied to us, that we don't have our own righteousness as the as Paul did before he was saved, the self-righteousness, the righteousness which is of the flesh, but mm -hmm. we have that perfect righteousness of Christ applied to us. Now he says, for the promise that he should be heir of the world. So this is referring to Abraham, and you know, there are some that debate on what exactly this promise means. Since this phrase, heir of the world, is not using any of the promises given to Abraham, but we do know that he was promised to become a great and mighty nation. Amen. Genesis 18, 17 through 18 tells us that, as well as it says that in him shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's referring to the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then in Genesis 17, verses 4 and 5, it tells us that he shall be a father of many nations. Well, these promises are repeated several times throughout the scriptures, but these were the promises given to Abraham that you know, in other places it says that his seed shall be as the sand on the seaside or the, as the stars in heaven just innumerable in multitude all these promises were given to Abraham but yet I think the Jews missed it it wasn't just because they were of his fleshly seed mm -hmm. Well, there were certain promises given to his descendants that you know, they would inhabit the land of Canaan, that they would have certain things because they were of the land of Abraham. But these promises were spiritual promises here. That, mm -hmm. Amen. That Abraham would be heir of the world is not that the Jews would one day rule the world. In fact, because of their disobedience, they have been very much regard as the lowest of the world. Mm -hmm. But knowing that one day all those who believe will be heir of the world. We can turn over to Psalms real quick. Psalm 37. And this is also seen in Psalms 25. But Psalms 37 gives us a promise. And Christ repeats this promise in the Gospels. Psalm 37, verse number 9 through 11. Notice it says, For the evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Amen. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And if you're familiar with the, what we call the Beatitudes, and that portion of scripture Christ says the same thing that the meek shall inherit the earth in Matthew 5 5 that those who are true believers, those who are meek in spirit, those are the ones who are going to inherit the earth that one day we have a 
promised coming of a new world that is free of sin, and that is where our inheritance lies. Amen. We can turn to Second Peter real quick and see that. Second Peter, chapter number three. Well, he tells us that this world is going to be burned up one day and melt with the fervent heat. And he says that the heaven shall pass away with the great noise, verse 10, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also in the works that are there and shall be burned up. And notice chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. That is the world which we are heir to, the earth which we shall inherit, as the scripture says. That is the promise that was given to Abraham, just as given to us today. That one day we will be in a world free of sin, free of even the effects of sin. Amen. This promise was given all the way back in Abraham and to, and to his seed, it says. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. He was to his seed, but not through the law, it says. It wasn't just his physical seed. It wasn't just those who were given the law. Well, the law nor obedience could bring about these things. The law was not given that it should bring about life or justification or righteousness. Amen. Really, being justified by faith is the only way by which we shall receive this inheritance. Amen. This is where the Jews, and especially the Pharisees, missed the mark that they thought by keeping the law they would be justified in the sight of God. That they were a special people because they kept the law. In fact, with God, it's quite the opposite way, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, it was not through the law, as he says here. It was not because the Jews had the Mosaic Law, which would come some several hundred years after Abraham. See, that's, I think, a point that they missed, too, is that Abraham didn't have what they called the Law. Right. Thank you. We'll turn over Galatians later if we have time, but we'll see it was about 430 years after Abraham. Mm -hmm. And neither was it through obedience, because it says that Abraham believed God and was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham was justified by faith. We saw very clearly in the early part of this chapter. He said it's not to see through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That faith was the means by which these promises were given. And really still the same today that by faith we receive the promises of God. Amen. Certainly there are promises of God which are conditional, such as, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, even says, then I will heal their land, so on. But that was not these promises. These promises were saying, Abraham, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And Abraham just believed God. Abraham had faith in these promises, as it says later in this chapter. The law demanded perfect obedience. Any, really any promise that was conditioned upon the law would require that same thing, perfect obedience to receive the promise. We have faith demands dependence upon God. Mm -hmm. and that is the difference between a works-based salvation and one that's by grace through faith. But your salvation and the promises that come with that and the blessings that come with that are all conditioned upon your obedience, your, mm -hmm. quote, good works. Amen. Yet even with Abraham, and so it is with us, that salvation, justification, righteousness, and so on, all the promises of God are by faith in Christ. They're not dependent upon anything that we have done, but what Christ has done. 
Our responsibility is simply to believe on Him, to trust in Him, to rely fully upon Him. That is what real biblical faith is. Amen. We, there are some today that want to mix the two, but as Paul brings out later on, you can't have it both ways. It has to be either one way or the other. Amen. These promises that we have are not through any law, or not through any commandments, or not through any of our obedience or good works, but simply through faith and that righteousness which we have of Christ. You know, this whole chapter is basically a very long discourse on how justification is completely by faith. Amen. He primarily uses Abraham in different aspects of his life to show this. We'll go on to verse number 14. It says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, now give us a reason for the promise coming through faith. The day which are the law, that was the Israelites, the Jews which were given the law through Moses. For they which are the law be heirs, faith is made void. That is, if the law or obedience to it could bring about this justification or righteousness and faith would be of no use. Faith would be made void, like a like when you void out a check, it's of no value anymore. That's where the Jews missed it. That's where people who believe in works salvation miss it today. That if it's of works, if it's of your own obedience, then, it's, then faith is of no use anymore. Right. If there is not a law that could bring about life, you know, there would be no need for faith if the law could bring our righteousness, if the law could cause us to be justified in the sight of God, if the law could do any of these things, there would be no need for faith. It would all be because of our obedience. But once again, faith shows our complete dependence upon Christ and upon God. You know what he says? And the promise made of none effect. So there were the promises of salvation, the promises of justification, the promises that we have in the Word of God are completely based upon our faith in Christ, not upon our obedience. Amen. And certainly there are certain blessings that come about by being obedient and by serving Christ, but when it comes to these things such as salvation and justification and righteousness, it's all upon our faith in Christ. Yeah. Which I thought it was interesting to note that this Made of none effect means that it would be destroyed, caused to cease, done away with, made inactive. That if it were by works, then the promises would be inactive. It wouldn't be of any use to us anymore. Because it would be what we were working for and gaining for. But rather, because they are of faith, we just completely depend upon God to provide these promises. Mm -hmm. We don't look to ourselves and what we are doing. We look rather to Christ and what he has done. And so it was with Abraham. He didn't do anything to earn these promises. I mean, if you know anything about Abraham and his background, he was a heathen. He was in right worshiping the pagan gods of his ancestors and until God called him, until God Amen. set him apart and set, sent him to the land of Canaan, he was really nobody special, right? And really so it is with us today. We were following after the gods of this world. We were following after the lust and desire of the flesh. We mad. Doing all these things, maybe going about the emotions of religion, but until, until God called us, we were, had nothing to offer God, did we? And so it is, we, our faith rests completely upon what Christ has done. I you know I, maybe I'm beating a dead horse, but I just want to drive home that salvation or anything that we receive of Christ is not because of our obedience or because of our good works. Amen. But really completely depend upon the goodness of God. 
said the law demanded perfect obedience. So that was what would be required to bring about anything of the law. If you want to be justified by the law or good works, you need perfect obedience. If you seek to have your own righteousness of the law, that means you have to have a perfect righteousness in and of yourself, and that's impossible in the flesh. If you seek to earn the promises of God through the law, then that means you must completely obey the law in all its aspects. And we know that only Christ was able to do that. But rather, faith brings us down to where we are, that we can just depend upon God. It shows us that we are incapable of ourselves in doing any of those things. To really have faith in Christ means that we must admit that we could not keep the law, that we Amen. are not righteous, that we needed a Savior. As we will see in Romans or Galatians 3, the law was meant to take us to Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's go to verse 15 real quick. He explains upon verse 14 here in the 15th verse. He says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Amen. The law worketh wrath. That means that that's speaking of the wrath of God, the punishment for sin. That is what the law brings about. So the law was to show us our sin and our other sinfulness. It was never to bring about life. In fact, if anything, the law brings death. When we get to Romans chapter 7, Paul says that the law, for the law, he was alive. When the law revived, he died. Amen. But the law shows us our utter incapability to be righteous in the sight of God. The law could not bring about life. And that is why it must be by faith in Christ. The law could not save us because it was weak in the flesh, Paul says later in the book of Romans. The law worked in wrath. The law, excuse me, let me say it this way. Sin is always present when there is the law. Right. For 1 John 3, 4 tells us sin is the transgression of the law. As he says here, for where no law is, there is no transgression. That seems like a simple thought that we can, can't break the law if there is no law. You know, he'll expound upon this in chapter 5, so we won't spend too much time on that thought. But the law shows us our sinfulness, shows us our need for Christ. The law Amen. really provokes the wrath of God because we always break the law. And yet faith in Christ that shows us his mercy and his grace his goodness towards us let's turn over to Galatians chapter 3 and we're going to go real quickly through this chapter and make some comments that's a good companion chapter to where we are studying Romans if you're familiar with the book of Galatians they were tricked if you will into going back under the law by the what we call the Judaizers. They were the same. Well, we got to keep the law for righteousness sake. We got to... They were really going back into Judaism with, with somehow adding Christ to that. Much like the quote Messianic Jews do today. Exactly. Like the Hebrew roots type movement do. But every time I've seen that line of thinking always ends up to denying Christ. Yeah, I've even seen some that go all the way as far as to deny the whole New Testament and everything but the Pentateuch. Exactly. The Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been heavenly set forth crucified among you. He's kind of ridiculing them here a bit for their return to legalism and keeping the law as we call it is only what I have learned have you received you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith amen did you receive the spirit of God the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost whichever term you want to use does that come by the works of the law or does that come by faith 
I can tell you most certainly it's not by keeping the law that you receive the Spirit of God. Amen. Verse 3, he says, Are ye so foolish, having begun the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? I mean, here's where the Campbellites and others, even some so-called Baptists, get it wrong, but God doesn't save you and leave you to keep your own salvation. Yeah. Isn't that what they teach? That if you don't hold out faithful, then you're, you're going to be right. lost in the end? Be bad. Well, the same Spirit which gave us life will keep us alive through the Spirit. The same God which has begun a good work in us will perform it on the day of Jesus Christ, he says. No, it's not that we are born again of the Spirit and then must, in the flesh, strive to keep our own salvation. Verse 4, he says, Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, or giveth to you the Spirit, and worketh the miracles among you, doth he doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Amen. Do we see miracles, and do we see the giving of the Spirit by obedience to the law, or is it by faith? Once again, we know it is not by the keeping of the law that God does these things. Any miracle that we see among us is not because of our obedience to Him. Even in the book of James, we're told to pray for the sick and anoint them with oil. And it doesn't say that because of your obedience that the sick shall be made whole, does it? It says, by the prayer of faith, you shall save the sick. Mm -hmm. It's always by faith and not by works. No matter what we see of God, no matter what we receive of God, you can be sure it's not because, oh, well, Brother Larry was a good boy. I'm going to show this miracle to him. <laughs> no, it's always simply by faith. Amen. And the goodness of God. Notice verse number six. He brings about Abraham again. Even as Abraham believed God, was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now this doesn't mean that we are physical descendants of Abraham. Like I said before, any of us could be, I guess, since the ten tribes were dispersed throughout the world. But no, spiritually we are the children of Abraham, he says. Amen. Amen. Because even as Abraham believed God was counted for righteousness, so it is for us that we have faith in God and it's counted for us for righteousness. And when we stand before God, we're saved that we'll have the righteousness of Christ applied because of faith. We will not have to stand in our own righteousness. Verse number 8 says, In the scriptures, foreseeing that God will justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel of Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. Amen. Here we see a promise that was given to Abraham as well as a, a prophecy of Christ that through Abraham's physical descendants, Christ has come, and through Christ all nations of the world will be blessed. And I think we see that fairly well fulfilled in our day that throughout all the nations of this world there are believers in Christ. That God, knowing that he would justify the heathen through faith, you know, Amen. God didn't just roll the dice and hope it would work out. He foreordained it from eternity past. That he would justify the heathen through faith. He says that he preached the gospel to Abraham. And this is the same gospel that we have today that Christ would be the, our penalty for sin, that Christ would be our remedy for sin, that Christ would save us from sin. Verse 9 goes on, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith of Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curses everyone that continues not all things which are written in the book of the law do them. Mm -hmm. And there we see again, the law demanded perfect obedience. If you didn't continue in every aspect of the law, then you're under its curse. And that is a problem with those who want to keep the law for salvation. That's the problem with those who want to have a works-based salvation. That you must have perfect and complete obedience. For, otherwise, you are under the curse of the law. Right. 
Verse 11 says, But that no man is justified in the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Amen. As we've seen in, in Romans, that you cannot be justified before God by the law. But as we saw in the book of James, you can be justified inside of man by your deeds. But we shall live by faith, he says. That once again, faith is always the key to the, to the life of a child of God. Verse 12 says, And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. You may, many many today seek to be saved by good works and they have no faith. You can do all the good works you want to, but if you don't have faith in Christ, it will not matter when you stand before God. Amen. Verse 13, he says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. And we were under the curse of the law in our flesh, in our natural state. We were condemned by the law, and yet Christ became that curse for us and set us free, if you will. Verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Here is this same blessing and promise of Abraham. That Abraham had, we have it through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that doesn't mean that we have descended from Abraham, but spiritually through Christ we are his children. Amen. Through Christ we are the seed of Abraham, as he says in the end of this chapter. Verse 15, he said, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth and wrath there are two. That is, meant no man can void or make of no effect the, this covenant which we have of God. Amen. Verse 16, Now Abraham did see what the promises made. You Notice know, the next part of this. He saith not and deceived as a many, but as a one, and that I see, which is Christ. See, the promises of Abraham lay all pointed to Christ. Amen. Oh, the Jews, they were really proud that they had Abraham as their father. That's not what the promises were about. Amen. They were about Christ and his coming. And they were given to the spiritual seed of Abraham, not simply to his physical seed. Verse 17 says, And this I say that the covenant was confirmed before God in Christ. The law, which was hundred or it was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul that should make the promise of none effect. And these, these promises of Abraham were given, as he says, four hundred and thirty years before the law came. The law did not come about and say, Oh well, now you have to be obedient to the law or you won't receive the promise. Well, just as it was by faith in Abraham, so it was, was by faith throughout all of Israel's history, and even to this day, it's by faith we receive the promises. So the, the law was never meant to bring about the promises of God, it was never meant to bring about salvation, it was never meant to bring about life. It just showed us our sinfulness and how we were complete, utter sinners in the sight of God. How that we could not in our own selves save ourselves, but how that we needed a savior. Verse 18 says, For the promises be, or excuse me, for the inheritance be the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Amen. Once again, the law, if it was a, by our obedience, it's not a promise, it's something we earn. If it was through the law, then it was be something that we could deserve rather than simply the goodness of God. Verse 19 says, Wherefore then serve the law? He asked the question, Well, what's the purpose of the law then? It was added because of transgressions, so the seed should come, that is Christ, in whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Mm -hmm. See, the law was given because of transgression, he says, because of sin, to show us exactly what we really were. Verse 21 says, Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For there had been a law given which could have given life, early righteousness should have been by the law. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's the same thing I've been saying over and over again, that the law could not give life. The law could not bring righteousness. This had to come by faith, as our next verse says, but the scripture has concluded all under sin. It doesn't leave any out. That all are condemned under the law and all are under sin. That the promises by the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Amen. See the promise of salvation, the promise of justification, and so on. It was not by the law, but it was not to the Jews because they were Jews by nature, but rather it was to those who have believed. To first the Jew and then also to the Greek. It was verse 23, where before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up to the faith which should be afterward be revealed. As before we had the law, before we had faith, we were under the law. Before that was faith was given to us, we were bound by the law, and we were by nature condemned by the law. But verse 24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Amen. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So here is the main purpose of the law, to point us to Christ. Amen. To show us our need for a Savior, to show us our utter helplessness in and of ourselves, And if any, that's why I don't quite understand how anyone could hold to a, a works-based salvation or a, a salvation that's based upon the law because it, really we are incapable of earning salvation that way because that requires perfect, sinless obedience and man is not capable of doing that. Yeah. Verse 26, he says, For all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So we are the children of God if we have faith in Christ. He told a certain group of the Jews that they were the children of the devil, didn't he? Right. They are your father of the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. So it doesn't matter your genealogy or your you're raising or how good of a person you are, didn't matter how good they kept the law, that was the Pharisees that he was talking to. And they were, as touching the law, blameless. Mm -hmm. and yet it's by faith that we're the children of God, not by obedience, not by good works, not by church membership or baptism or family affiliation or anything such as that. It's simply by faith in Christ Jesus alone. For as many, verse 27, as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on the Christ. Because we are baptized into the body of Christ, and he says we've been we've put on Christ. We are, baptism is a type of being buried with him and we're being raised to walk in newness of life, Romans says. Verse 28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, the Jews don't have a superior place in Christ. Us men, we don't have a superior place in Christ. Whether you are a slave or whether you are a free American, there's no levels when it comes to Christ where we are all one, he says. You know, the white person is not better than the black person. The Americans, we are not any better than those over in China or Philippines. I mean, bad. We are all one level in Christ. We ought not to think ourselves better than any others. Yeah. As Paul said, it's by the grace of God I am what I am. Amen. Verse 29, we'll close. It says, and if you be Christ, if you belong to Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. And we are in Christ, and we belong to him. If we've been born again, he says, not physically but spiritually we are the seed of Abraham and we are heirs of the same promises that Abraham had. And we could get into a lot about all the different promises that were given to Abraham. Mm -hmm. The primary one of our text is that he should be heir of the world. Amen. So shall we be heir of the world that is to come. When this world will pass away but we look for a new world wherein dwells righteousness. We look for that new 
world where sin is banished, where the curse of sin is done away with, where Christ reign, reigns supreme, and we shall ever be with him. And that is a promise to all those who believe. That promise is only attained to by faith. Not by obedience, not by law, not by being a Jew, not by any other thing, but simply faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I, all I can do is point you to Christ. Amen. That you might be heir as well with us. That we might be joint heirs of Christ, as he says later on. The Lord's going to look at the next few verses in the next lesson here. But he kind of continues on the same thought about how it's of faith and by grace. It's not of the law. Don't worry. It will we'll change subjects a little bit and show that Abraham had faith in the promises of God. And then he'll conclude the chapter and we'll start chapter 5. Where he talks about that we, since we have been justified by faith, what goes on from there. Amen. Let's go close with that thought.